All right, guys, we are off the edge. Episode three. I'm Jake Allen Bogan. He is Cameron Lynch. And uh, yeah. we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today, but obviously, most notably, before you switch that dial, uh, Allen Robinson was traded by the Rams to brutal. the Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolutely brutal. But we will be discussing that. We will be talking about that. Before we get into that, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. And let's dive into betonline.ag. It's your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. Bet Online is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right to UFC and boxing. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options, your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use your promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So, Cam, we are going to start right away, right off the rip. We are going to be talking about Allen Robinson. And the burning question is Allen Robinson cooked, like they're saying on Twitter. Is Allen Robinson <laughs> cooked, or did the Steelers get a potential stud? in the 30 year old former Rams receiver. The Steelers won, Jake, the Steelers won. If folks can go to the Believe in Rams podcast, they, they can see that I'm a big fan of Allen Robinson, um, played against him when I was at Syracuse, he was at Penn State. Um, you know, our coaches when I was at Syracuse didn't account for him coming in in the second half. Jake, you know the story. This man, we were winning, we were beating Penn State up in Mount Lament Life, you know, go figure Syracuse beating Penn State. And our coach didn't account for Allen Robinson coming in the second half. I think he had a suspension or something like that. He comes back in the second half and just falls out and pretty much wins the game for Penn State. So I, I, I believe in him. Um, just watching him from the Rams, I know things didn't work out too well with Matthew Stafford getting injured and him having um, you know the short end of the stick there. But I do know one thing, Jake, that this man can get up and get that football. He can create separation. Um, he can make big plays. So Allen Robinson going to the Steelers and you got, you know, Kenny Pickett, you got uh, Mitchell, Mitch Trubisky on, on the Steelers who can throw him that football. And so he's going to get two elite quarterbacks, you know, not only if, if he's going to have guys that can throw the ball to him and even two, right? Like, let's say the twos are in, he can have the second string or, or the first, a different quarterback, throw him the ball and get that practice. So I do think he's going to get a lot of reps compared to what he got in, in LA, right? I think Matthew Stafford didn't go to OTAs or to training camp. So he couldn't get that, that camaraderie and that chemistry built. And I do think Allen Robinson is going to get that bill, get that bill at the Steelers. And you think about it just with, with Tomlin of uh, being at the Steelers, he's been to the playoffs pretty much every year of his coaching, of his coaching career. And so for Allen Robinson to be under that regime, that's a win-win. I, I know he wanted to win one at the buck at their, sorry, at the Rams, couldn't get that done. Nice with the Steelers. I think the Steelers got a steal there. Jake, what do you think? Uh, I think this is a guy that's had 1,400 yards receiving with Blake Bortles. Uh, not to flame Blake Bortles, but with the way everyone kind of perceives him, that's impressive, right? I mean, look, with when I look at Allen Robinson, I think exactly like you said, he's coming to a team with Kenny Pickett, who now he is a veteran presence. So right off the bat, he is a 30 year old receiver that can go up and high point the football. He has experience playing in the slot and on the outside. He can win with physicality on the outside. If he has to hand fight, he can do that. If he has to redirect himself, he can do that. If he has to change an ultimate or his catch radius he can do that so a guy that plays above the rim as a pass catcher and that's something big and I think it, it's not just a Kenny Pickett win it's a George Pickens win George Pickens is another guy we saw it at Georgia a guy that can go up and high point the football he's going to make those crazy plays but having a guy that he can look up to we saw how important it was uh, Bobby Wagner going to the Rams and what he was able to do you know kind of grooming Ernest Jones and we saw Ernest Jones he's taking Taken on that mantle he wants to be the guy I think it's a very underrated thing to have a veteran take a young player under his wing and I think that's what Allen Robinson is going to do with George Pickens similar play style next up what I will say about this they give up nothing 
nothing. I mean, you you basically give up. So you went down 17 spots in the seventh round to get a receiver that has the capabilities to go over a thousand yards, have 10 plus touchdowns, give you a red zone threat, give you a deep ball threat, give your young quarterback a veteran option that you can buy into. Uh, Cam, I think this is a hundred percent a win for the Steelers. I think when you look at Allen Robinson, kind of like what you were saying, and I know we've talked about him a lot on uh, believe in Rams. I kind of told you, I, I didn't have a good feeling about him coming back, <laughs> but this is a guy let's not forget. Cause I'll admit when I'm wrong, uh, this is, this is a guy that I thought would lead the league and receive it because I thought the double team with Cooper cup teams were going to really focus in on him. No OBJ van Jefferson starting the season injured. And so I felt like Allen Robinson could come right in has Matthew Stafford. We've seen the way he had played with guys like Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, obviously Calvin Johnson. And so I felt like this was a no brainer. You're going, you're solidifying, uh, you know, your deep threat down the field, a guy that can win uh, with his overall size and his body control near the sideline. And most importantly, it was diversifying the receiver room where I believe in this case, the Steelers are doing that because they have a guy in George Pickens that does similar to what Allen Robinson does. He's not just that. I would say he's a little bit, I would say he's a lot faster uh, than Allen Robinson down the field. So he gives you that deep threat. You have Deontay Johnson, who is an absolute monster off the line of scrimmage and what he's able to do uh, with his, you know, foot speed and, you know, his overall route running. Um, And then, you know, you have Calvin Austin, who we didn't get a chance to see last year, Uh, But they spent a decently high pick on him. And this is somebody that is kind of like your 2-2 Atwell. He's kind of like your Tavon Austin. He's kind of like, you know, uh, Rondale Moore. You know, somebody like that that's, okay, he's your fourth receiver. But when he's in the game, you have to account for his speed. And we didn't get a chance to see him last year, but I think we will this year. And I think this just adds to... Overall, what you're looking at is diversifying the receiver room. And that was why we liked the the Allen Robinson pickup so much for the Rams. But I think the Steelers are going to do right by him because they're not going to have Allen Robinson trying to fill a role that he's not supposed to be filling. I think this is somebody that's going to play on the outside. While he can play on the inside, I think it's better to keep Pickens on the outside with him, have Deontay, uh, you know, in the slot and uh, let it rip with Kenny Pickett because, man, he yeah. really showed some uh, signs of being a franchise quarterback and a good one at that uh, down the stretch last year. Yeah, and one other thing too, Jake, that that I'm thinking of as you walk through this the receiver room, one thing I do know is when a quarterback has options to throw to, one other one other great thing in the backfield is Najee Harris, right? you got a workhorse in the backfield, and so <clears> – <throat> getting Allen Robinson there on the other side of George Pickens is going to open up the running game as well. So you, you start off with the run, right? This is football one-on-one. You start off with the run, you get the run game going and that opens up the pass and you've got different options to throw the ball to. And so I think their skill positions are now at a great point where they can go and win some football games. Uh, like you, like we talked about earlier, these guys make it to the playoffs pretty much every year. So they can go to the playoffs and make a deep run now. And so now when it comes to the draft, now they got to get some, so make sure they have old linemen that can block, right? Make sure you have old linemen that can block and keep the quarterback healthy. We don't want to – the goal is not to see the second quarterback, Jake, right, if you're an offense. If you're a defensive guy like me, the goal is to see the second quarterback, <laughs> right? You want to cause cause pain and inflict pain on the quarterback so you can see the second guy. And so what that does is it opens up the draft where the Steelers can get offensive, get some offensive linemen to, to firm up that line and then also on the defensive side, right? you got guys that can score – so how about you get you can get some guys on defense and give the give the guys on offense the ball back? I think that's going to be really important. So this draft is looking good for the Steelers. Um, that's a big big move by them, and it's unfortunate for the Rams, Jake. Uh, I, you know I'm a Rams guy and uh, a big fan of Allen Robinson. So the fact that he left is unfortunate. I know we were kicking and screaming on the Believe in Rams podcast, like man, if Allen Robinson gets traded for pennies, I don't, I don't want to say pennies, but if he gets traded for a value that's less than his, like we're going to flip some tables and Jake. It's it's table flipping time, my man. <laughs> I, I'm with you, man. I am absolutely with you. Uh, any Rams fan that isn't upset about this return, I don't know what to tell you because it's not like the Steelers. And here's the thing, Cam. This is where we're we're going to get into money a little bit here, right? We're going to get into value these, these picks. So at the end of the day, when the Rams went out and they traded for a Von Miller, 
Okay, they gave up a second and a third with the stipulation that the Broncos were taking care of it. For the most part, they're just taking care of that contract. They're eating the rest of it. It's a one-year deal. The Rams don't have to take up too much because of it. The Broncos get more in return, right? They get more draft capital. You do this when you're a team that's, you know, not going to make the playoffs, not going to win a Super Bowl that year. You make this trade at the deadline, and then next year you use those picks to help you in the draft, right? So you do that, but the Rams aren't doing that. And that was the thing that kind of threw us, uh, you know, for a loop, because when we talked about this, like you were like, wait, a, a pick swap? come again <laughs> like we texted about this and, and look i'll be honest with you um i didn't think it was going to be a ton until i read that the rams were only saving 1.6 million so i'm like okay if they're only saving 1.6 million in this trade then they have to be getting at least a seventh i mean i wouldn't be surprised if it's a fourth but then i remembered that it's Les sneed who's the general manager who routinely gets fleeced. I mean, let's just be honest here. Allen Robinson is getting paid pretty much his entire contract. Uh, the, the Rams are paying almost all of it. To not have him on the roster, to move up 17 spots in the seventh round, you couldn't even get a seventh rounder out of that. You couldn't even get a 2024 pick out of that. You, you settled for a pick swap in the seventh round. Like, I mean... At that point, and this this is going to bring us to our vibe or don't vibe with segment, Les Snead's lack of trade return is becoming a serious issue for the Rams. Vibe or don't vibe with Kim? I I mean I Jake I'm gonna say I'm gonna say don't I don't vibe with it. Um, you know it it is concerning right now. It is concerning now what Les Snead is doing. Um, but what I will say is that he has found success, right? I mean, my man hit a Super Bowl, the, you know, the re, in the recent years. So um, I, I don't vibe with his lack of trade return. Um, but what I do vibe with is his ability to win. I, I do vibe with that, right? Um, it doesn't seem like he's getting much value with these trades, uh, especially with Jalen Ramsey. And I think he got, uh, it was like a th- as a third or a tight end or something like that. So it's the value is not there. Um, you know, Bobby Wagner didn't get much for him either. So it's like, hey, you got these premium athletes. You got some Hall of Famers on your team, and you're not really getting much for them. Um, one thing I will say, though, Jake, is I, I stopped discounting seventh-round picks and, of course, undrafted players. But I think we talked about in our last episode, we talked about Brock Purdy and his resurgence and just to see him elevate. Um, I think now when it comes to the draft, of course, you know, your top your, your top guys, your top tier guys are the guys that are going to, you know, make plays and, and really, you know, push your franchise forward. But I do think there are sleepers. Uh, wink, wink, a uh, little, a little nod to our, ne- our next our next series here. But I do think there are sleepers in the draft. And so if the Rams are able to get a sleeper for Allen Robinson, you know, job well done. But it's it's not looking ugly. So no, vi- it, it is looking ugly right now. So no vibe for me um, on that on that topic. Jake, what, what are your thoughts? I am going to absolutely vibe that it is becoming a serious issue for the Rams. Hear me out, Kim. All right. Cause I, I look, I like Les Snead. I know some people are going to be like, no, you don't. No, I actually do. Okay. I was, I was the one that, you know, banged the table to keep him with McVay. There were a lot of people that are saying the next head coach should pick a new GM. I wanted to stick by him, see what he could do without Fisher. But let's be honest here. If he's still with Fisher, you know, he doesn't have a Super Bowl. You could argue he has more, you know, leverage, more more wiggle room to make moves because, you know, he has a really good head coach um, right now. But would he still have that with Jeff Fisher? That's the thing. So I think a lot of the success Les Need has had, while he deserves credit, that credit also has to go to Sean McVay, who the moment he stepped in the building, the moment Les Need stepped in the building, things were different. You could tell. And, and I mean, obviously, you know, you're in the building as well. Like things are different. They're not the so sar Rams anymore. Like you guys had a chance to win some games, in my opinion, um, that, you know, if Sean McVay was the head coach, you guys win. Like, I mean, that's just the facts. Yeah. You were in those close games. It's constantly, we should have won that game coming from Rams fans. So my point is that when Les Need steps in the building, he changes some things, 
But and and they get rid of thank God the the four pillars or or whatever Billy Devaney had before where they wouldn't draft any guys with character you know issues. And we talked about Janoris Jenkins didn't do a, anything when he got to the NFL. Nothing, not a peep. Um. So anyway, you know he did change some things. But when you you look at Sean McVay, the moment he steps in, they go to the playoffs. First time since two thousand four. You were there. Uh, the moment he steps in, playoffs, right? And then you have the Super Bowl in year two, right? And then 2019, which was a down year, if the Rams, which you were also there, if the Rams, uh, you know, are playing in today's NFL with the seven-team format, they're in the playoffs. Then 2020, which is kind of a, a weird limbo year, the defense is fantastic. The offense isn't quite where it needs to be. You're still like, okay, this team still can do something. They win a playoff game. The next year, they win the Super Bowl. This year, it took all sorts of injuries to take them completely out of the playoffs and out of having a winning season for the first time in Sean McVay's career as a head coach. Sneed deserves credit, no doubt. And Kroenke deserves credit for allowing Sneed to make these moves, for being okay to spend money. But the fact of the matter is this. He does deserve blame for other things. There are different ways that they could have gone about this season. They are paying $74.5 million to players that will not contribute and will not be on the roster in 2023. These are the facts. So my my thing here is when you, you get rid of Jalen Ramsey in a season, you get rid of Bobby Wagner, you get rid of Leonard Floyd, you get rid of Allen Robinson, and the most you have to to build off that, you know, the most you have, you have a third rounder, you have Hunter long, who is a third rounder, who is now worth a seventh rounder, in my opinion, maybe not even. And you get a seventh round pick swap that you, you moved up a little bit in the draft in the seventh round. Oh my God, that much talent going out, that much money being paid and just not a lot coming in. That grinds my gears, and it is becoming a serious issue for the Los Angeles Rams. And if this continues, you know, there's going to be a problem. Uh, when you have all sorts of, you know, fans saying the less need special as opposed to pick swaps, that's not a good thing, man. That That's not good. Mm -hmm. I like less need. Um, I better not see a draft house this year, <laughs> but I do like less need. And I like Sean McVay, the way they work together. And I think they're top 10 at each position. And I'm not calling for Les Snead's head. I don't think he should be fired. But I definitely think that it is a serious issue for the Rams because the constant do right by this guy, do right by this guy. Well, the last time I checked, and I know I do this with a former NFL player, and we are a player-friendly podcast here, or player 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 friendly show anytime you and I have a tandem we have an understanding of each other uh you know we we support the player but you can't also you can't have it both ways you can't be like yeah we we totally uh you know we're all about getting Jalen Ramsey to Miami so we're gonna take less or we got to do right by Allen Robinson because he wants to go to the Steelers we're gonna get less you can't do that but then also say it's a business. So is a business decision. Like if you want to do right by Robert Woods, who was a team captain and a guy that fit the offense, like a glove, don't trade him to begin with, figure out a way to keep him. You know, I don't have to tell you, I mean, you were very adamant about Bobby Woods being a guy, you know, there in that locker room, but that's, that's where I'm at because you yeah. can't have it both ways. You can't be like, do right by the player. It's a business. Jake, one, one thing I will say, I do hope that Leslie has something up his sleeve. I know I said it before, but I hope he has something up his sleeve. And that's why I said I'm not vibing, right? I have that crazy faith where Leslie's going to be like, ah, gotcha. You know, like I'm, I'm hoping he's like, here for it. Gotcha. And, and I do think, Jake, what I'm what I'm hoping for, we call it hopeism. What I'm hoping for is with these minimal trades with some of the teams like the Dolphins, you know, like the Steelers. I'm hoping that they have something worked out where it's like a, a gentleman's handshake. Like, hey, like I'm gonna do you a solid right now, but in the future, let's let's figure this out. So that's that's what I'm hoping for. So Jake, what I will say for I'm not gonna vibe. I'm gonna go opposite of what you, what you're vibing with. I'm not gonna vibe with it because I think he has a long term plan. I think he is going to 
uh, flip the script on us, Jake. Come come season. Come the season. I think he's gonna flip the script. And I want to put a pin um in this moment, I think in this draft and this offseason, because when the time does come where it's like, oh, I see what you did there, Les. So I, I'm I'm looking for one of those moments. It's a hope is a moment, but I have faith in my guy Les Neat. Well, and I'll say this to your point, Cam, uh, and that was a really interesting thing you made, like the handshake. I, I like that because, uh, you know, the gentleman's handshake, you could argue that's what happened with the Broncos. Uh, before they got Von Miller, they did trade away Kenny Young and they got pennies for him. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you, we need a linebacker. Our linebackers go down. You give us Kenny Young and then we'll give you Von Miller at the, the trade deadline, you know, weeks later. Interesting uh, little thing there. I, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, um, keep your eye out for the gentleman's <laughs> handshake, Jake. I don't don't let this stuff fool you. I, you see the numbers. You see the stuff flowing. It's like this is not making it making sense. But uh, be aware of the gentleman's handshake. <laughs> yes. And I, I certainly will now. Uh, Josh Allen. Let's let's talk a little bit about Josh Allen. I've had my issues with Josh Allen. I think he's an incredible player. Uh, I think he is incredibly gifted. And, you know, he has turned into one of the best passers in the league. But I feel like this year he kind of took a step back. Like, I thought he was getting more disciplined with the way he was playing. And then this year he kind of resorted to going back to his old ways and then maybe not really taking care of the football the way he should running too much, putting himself in harm's way, uh, taking unnecessary hits and cam this, uh, this next viber don't vibe with uh part. Uh, Josh Allen will not be able to adapt his play style like the bills want him to. And the context here before you answer this cam, just for <laughs> those that don't know uh, in the press conference, uh, just a, you know, the other day, Josh Allen basically was talking about the fact that the bills do want him to change his play style. They want him to slide more the way he used it. They, they want him to live to play another down. So, do you vibe with this or do you not vibe with the idea that Josh Allen will not be able to adapt his play style? So I think Josh Allen will be able to, um, to adjust his play style. Um, he think he has to, I think he just said it right. He's like, I'm getting older football years. Jake are a little bit different than the normal years. I like to think of football years, like dog years, maybe half of dog dog years are like seven years. Think of football, like three to four years, like every year is like a three to four years in your life. So I know Josh, Allen has been in the NFL since 2018 or so. So he has quite a, he has a lot of years on him um, playing in the cold. As you know, Jake, you're in upstate New York. It gets cold out there. It's tough on the muscles. It's tough on the body. So Josh Allen playing in upstate New York, um, taking the beating that he does take, right? He, he takes on linebackers head on. He takes on DBs. I mean, he's a tough guy. Uh, he likes to hurdle people as well. He likes to do a lot of things rather than, sliding on the ground and like your Tom Brady's or your Aaron Rodgers. Um, one thing I do know is elite athletes know how to adjust to coaching like this, right? If one player will do one thing and a coach will say an adjustment and they'll be able to flip the script just like this for the rest of their career or whatever that is. Um, a lot of times when it comes to habit shake, it takes a lot of time to break a habit, but for NFL players, it's, it's a lot quicker because they know that their job is on the line. So with Josh Allen coming out, in saying that the presser that he's going to adapt his game, I believe it. He he has between now their their OTA their training camp to to try yeah from now to the training camp to figure that out. Maybe in practice you'll see him doing fake slides. You know what I'm not you know just hey if somebody about to tackle him, let me practice sliding instead of running past and getting tagged up. So he's a lot of time right now to to work that into his game plan. So I, I'm I'm vibing with the fact that that Josh Allen will be able to to change his game, and I'm not. I think, you know, this This is great, back and forth. Um, I'm not, and here's why. His DNA doesn't allow him to. And what I mean by that is you go back to Wyoming, playing in those same, you know, conditions. I mean, Wyoming isn't exactly, you know, a shiny, uh, you know, sunny, happy paradise over there. I mean, you know, he played in weather. And so I think when, you know, you look at Josh Allen throughout his career, that has been what he is. And... I honestly think this is more so PR and due diligence uh, by the bills to kind of put that out there to not worry fans. And, you know, obviously they, they got to cover it because it's going to be a serious thing, you know, looking around the league, you know, guys that are, are getting hurt, you know? And so I think uh, the best of, of, you know, ability is availability. 
and Josh Allen is going to look at this like I've been able to be available. Uh, he might adapt a little bit, but not the way that I think the Bills are looking for. So um, I actually vibe with the idea that Josh Allen will not be able to adapt to the style the Bills want him to because I think unless they go out and they make an emphasis on this, they they draft Bijan Robinson and they force this offense to be a run first team. That's the only way Josh Allen isn't running the ball. Josh Allen will still be running the ball 10, 12 times a game. That's what Josh Allen is because what Josh Allen does is he takes the running game and he builds off of it. He is a rhythm passer, but if he doesn't stay in his rhythm, he can still stay in that zone. He can still keep that momentum going with his ability to run the ball. And that's where he might try it at first, but realize, hey, this isn't going to work for me. They might have to have that internal discussion. I think he's definitely going to try, but I don't think he's capable of doing it because it's just what he is. When you think of Josh Allen, you think of you're synonymous to a guy that looks like a linebacker that can, you know, run as well as just about any running back in the league and can throw the ball like a rocket. So that is Josh Allen to me. Um, I hope he figures it out because at the end of the day, I think he's an incredible talent. He's good for the sport. And if he gets hurt, like, you know, an RG three situation, uh, the NFL fans and us are going to be heartbroken. Yeah. We're going to be heartbroken. I mean, think about RG theory. You think about your Carson Wentz's Carson Wentz has never been the same. A man's been on the MVP track. So yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to see that for Josh Allen. I think too, I, I know Tua just came out to the presser and said that he's going to continue playing. You know, he wants his young son to see him play football, right, and understand what he's doing. A lot of times the kids are one to two. They're like, what is this? What is that? But when he's about five to six, he can say, hey, my dad's a quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. So, Jake, there's a lot of player safety, I think, uh, in the mix here. Uh, I do know that later in our conversation we're going to discuss that. Um, but what I do know that when it comes to the owners' meetings, I'm sure they said, hey, guys, protect our quarterbacks. We're paying these guys – a lot of money people are paying a lot of money to come to these games and to see these guys right so the jerseys are being sold and it doesn't look great when your your starting quarterback is sitting on the bench it's almost like when people go to an nba game and the guy's on low management and they travel from spain <laughs> to go see a game and the guy's not there i think i think leisure want, are wanting to get away from that and the best way to do that is by being available so back to your point jake um Josh Allen, you said that he won't be able to adjust his game. I think they, I think he will. Um, I do know that the NFL has come out with with special helmets for the quarterback. So going back to the two of these, they're building special special helmets for these quarterbacks. The defensive ends are getting faster, Jake. I think that's probably the scariest thing in this game of football. We talked about in our, our last episode is the defensive ends are, are going to be running four twos. Think about your receiver, put a little bit more muscle on them, and just put them at the defensive end spot. And so Josh Allen, he's going to have to slide on the ground, Jake, or he's going to get torched. <laughs> like, it's 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 point blank, period. He's going to be barbecue chicken, and, you know, uh, the Buffalo fans are going to be burning those tables sad as heck because their starting quarterback is hurt. And so we don't want that, you know, same thing for your Lamar Jackson. This message is for, for, for Lamar Jackson as well. What, what Josh Allen is saying, this me, this message is for Lamar Jackson. We love to see his breakaway speed. I know he's trying to get this big old contract, but just moving forward, I think quarterbacks, they have to take care of themselves. Matthew Stafford, Jake, we went through a whole season calling leaving Rams, and Matthew Stafford wasn't healthy, man. So I think it's extremely important that quarterbacks adjust their game. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, I'm all for adjusting. I just don't know if Josh Allen's going to do it. Uh, <laughs> next true. up, speaking of adjusting, you know, the Bills, DeMar Hamlin, there, there's had to be a, a lot of adjustments. The league had to adjust. Uh, the team had to adjust. The fan base had to adjust. Fans of football had to adjust. And uh, DeMar Hamlin had to adjust. Um, he suffered a very rare uh condition called commodio cordis where at the worst time and i'm making this about as simple as it can be to to be explained but basically at the worst time of your heartbeat that's when you get hit dead on uh in the heart like a direct heart contact um and it can cause you to go into cardiac arrest and it, it's one of those things man where you know there was all sorts of stuff that was just really tasteless floating around the we talked about this floating around the internet um that's what it was it was commodia cordis we talked about it on on believe in rams uh, it, look i am so glad 
DeMar Hamlin is not only back, not, I mean, first off, not only alive, not only back, but Cam, he got cleared to play football. Um, at least make a comeback. This guy has been through so much trauma and the fact that he hasn't taken his eyes off the prize shows you exactly what it means to be a professional athlete. And, and, you know, really just that what teams want, you know, even looking, you know, the draft is a week away or, or so forth. You know, teams want that type of guy. Teams want a guy that's okay. I went through something incredibly traumatic, but my eyes still on the prize. I still want to play football, you know, and that's, that's big. So I guess my, my question for you, Cam, or, or both of us, vibe or don't vibe with, DeMar Hamlin will complete his comeback from Commodio Cordis and return to the Bills defense on Sundays. So, Jake, I'm going to say I'm going to say vibe because we, everyone loves that story, right? The comeback story, the comeback kid. But one thing it's like, can I do like a, a vibe and a don't vibe? Can I do like a half and half like Arnold Palmer lemonade? No, you can't. No, uh, no. <laughs> OK, well, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say vibe. We, you know, we all want to see him make his make his return back on the field. I think that's going to be great. But what I'm not vibing with, Jake, is the fact that now he's signing himself up. I think um, Israel Adesanya said this when he during one of his UFC, UFC fights. He was like, I'm prepared to die in this arena. I, I think with Damar Hamlin, same, same thing with Tua. I think when they went out on their pressers just the other day, I think they're signing themselves up for, for war. You know, I mean, everybody else is, but their war, their battle, just a little bit different. And so... That's what I'm not vibing with, Jake. I mean, I'm not vibing with it, Jake. I don't want I don't want to go through that again, to be honest. As a as a former athlete myself, I think as just a human in general, I don't want to go through that, right? And so to see someone commit themselves to that type of outcome, it's it's hard to see. And to be honest, it's you know, just looking at that, I don't know if I want my kids to play ball, like, wait, like. What, you know, because I feel like I would have done the same thing that he did. Like, hey, if I had had that that uh, that situation, I would want to step on the field again. And so it's like, if our mindset is like that, you know, if, we're, if we willingly sign our sign ourselves up for for war and possibly death, do I want my kids to follow that mindset for me? And I'm not vibing with it, Jake. Um, so I know we said we can't we can't make it mixy. We can't. I have an owner Palmer here, but I'm vibing with the fact that he's stepping back on the field. I would like to see him start a regular season game. And if he comes off the field right after that, <laughs> I'm vibing with that. I'm vibing with that. But we, we all we all want to see that that Cinderella story. We all want to see someone come back from, from one point to the next. But I don't know if I want to see it for too long. There have been some incredible comeback stories. Um, the, the one that I think, uh, the one that did not happen because no team would give him the chance um, Stedman Bailey, and mm. he was he was shot point blank in the head, and he was running routes like he wanted to come back, and no team was going to give him that chance. Um, so that that was really disappointing. But then you look at something that happened on the field, and I mean, you could also say Brian Robinson last year. You know, he, he was shot in the leg, and he played in the same season. Incredible. But another Washington player at the time that I'm going to bring up is Alex Smith, who his leg was just, I, it was one of the worst things I've ever seen in a sport. I mean, one of, honestly, one of the worst injuries I've ever seen. Um, putting it up there with Kevin Ware of, of Louisville in, in the tournament um, when his bone popped out of his, like, really bad stuff. Um, and I'm sure you remember the Alex Smith uh, injury. He came back. He came back. He started a game like it felt wrong because the Rams played them and they just teed off on him. And I was honestly just hoping he'd be OK. But he made that comeback. And it's weird because DeMar Hamlin, it's not just a heart. It's not just cardiac arrest. It's not just Commodio Cordis. But he he didn't have to re put together his leg. You know what I mean? He didn't have to like that's the thing. He Alex put, Smith put together his life. Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, like, it's, you, it's a little but you know what different. I'm, you know what I'm saying though? Like the fact that he is medically cleared, which I don't know how, but that just shows how much he wants it. He's medically cleared. 
He doesn't have like a broken leg that I'm worried about to the point where it was broken. He had like, you know, splinters. No, no, no. Like Alex Smith's leg, I was like, he's done. He's never playing again. That was awful. And he came back. So I'm not betting. I'm not betting against DeMar Hamlin. I'm going to say I vibe with not only the fact that he will complete this comeback cam, but I also believe he will be on the field on Sundays. Now, they did sign Taylor Rapp, okay? They have guys in the back end of the secondary. He may not be a guy that they want to lean on on the defense, but we can't deny how well he was playing when they needed him last year. He filled in in a pinch. I think he at least is going to play special teams, at least. But he's still so young, I wouldn't rule out him starting again. So I vibe with it. Okay, okay. And one thing, Jake, (laughs) so I just looked this up. Uh, You just said that he got cleared for his, uh, you know, his physical. And I know he just said, he said on his presser, his presser, I I just typed in leading cause uh, for death amongst athletes sudden cardiac arrest <laughs> jake I, I mean you know i, I don't I know blame I said, you cam i, I know i said you. vibe i know i said vibe we want to see him step on that field i think it's for his confidence it's for his story we want to see that we want to see him with that jersey that helmet but hey get you a series in and get right off i mean you don't have to get right off but jake come on fam like sudden cardiac arrest you said uh, you just mentioned it right people have come back from x y and z Mm-hmm. My man saw my man Demar saw the other side. You know what I mean? He oh, saw yeah. the other he saw the other side. So that's just concerning for me, right? Like I want to know number one, who cleared him? I, I know that the the team doctors cleared him. I hope the NFL they brought their doctors. I hope the NFL PA like I hope he's getting multiple reviews and multiple uh, just uh, perspectives on this because if I'm if I'm if I'm his mom if I'm his family I'm like dude. Please don't clear him. <laughs> Please don't clear him because if like if we see him drop again, Jake, it's like, all right. I mean, if anyone has any heart issues playing football, then you might just have to start ruling these guys out, Jake, right? Like, yeah. I think a lot of times when scouts, when we look, when you uh, look at players and you just look through their profile, if you see guys with heart issues and something happens to Mar Hamlin, from now on, now guys with heart issues are now going to be like, ooh, we might want to stay away from that because Demar Hamlin just survived something like this. So <clears throat> DeMar Hamlin coming back, it, it, it's going to be a great story. But if something else happens to him, I think it's going to affect the game of football forever. So, I mean, it already has, but <laughs> I don't know, Jake. I don't I, know. Hear me out, Cam. I would not be um, – first off, I'm not pushing this. I'm more so like I vibe with the idea. I think – I'm not betting against this kid. He will be out there again. Um, the Bills aren't giving up on him. See, here's the problem with Seven Bailey. He was on the Rams, right? So no team was going to sign that because no team wanted to run the risk. The guy got shot in the head. And if anything happens, you have a whole big mess on your hands. Yeah. But yeah. I think DeMar Hamlin already being on the Bills on a rookie deal and the Bills clearing him, letting him speak at the presser and having him like make his intentions known. Like I'm playing again. I want to play again. This is what I want to do. This is my job. This is my life. Like to me at that point, I'm not betting against that guy. He's right in the driver's seat. It may feel uncomfortable. It may feel, you know, kind of unreal and everything, but you know, he's a very good football player. Um, you know, he's in the NFL, obviously. So you gotta be a good football player to be in the NFL, but <laughs> He his last let's not forget his last play that he played. He was starting in that game. You know, he's tackling one of the best, you know, wide receivers in the league in T Higgins. And to me, I just feel like the age helps him. Uh, You know, you have the age. You have the fact he's on the bills. um, He's under contract and he's medically cleared. I I, I'm vibing with this. um, But again, I totally this is going to be one of those really sore uh, tough subjects to talk about you and I obviously not having an issue talking about it. Cause you know, I, I respect your opinion, respect mine, yeah. but I feel like there are going to be like fist fights online about this. And I don't think there should be at the end of the day. The only person who has the, the, you know, the final say is, is DeMar. If DeMar at any point doesn't feel like he can go, he's going to be honest. He's going to say, I can't go, but he wants this. And he's, he's worked his tail off to get to this point. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not out on him. I, I think he's going to do this. And I think the bills deserve a lot of credit. Um, 
you know, for, for giving him his chance because there are teams that would be like, nope, pulling the plug, we're cutting you, you know, we don't even want anything to do with this. They might force him into retirement. I mean, they're letting him do his thing. They're getting ready, you know, I, it depends on how much they're going to use him because they did go out, like I said, and get rap. They still have Poyer. You know, they still have Hyde. They have talent. He doesn't have to be the guy. But if he does end up being the guy, they have a hell of a player and they have a lot of depth now. Jake, I got I got two things for you. <clears throat> so if DeMar, he's going to decide to play, okay, that, that's fine. We, we, I said I vied with it. It's okay. I would like two things, Jake. One, I would want a second opinion. So I want him to say, hey, I got a second opinion with with a outside source about my heart. I got the second opinion, maybe even a third opinion. But I would love to see that, number one. All and the then opinions. Two, all the opinions. And then another thing, too, a lot of times when folks go and sign into the military, right, you go into the military, I'm sure one thing that they tell them is say, hey, you're signed up for the military. If you get deployed, let's make sure you get your affairs in order, right? If you don't come back, let's make sure that everything is in order. With Demar, with what he went through, Jake, I I can hear my mom in my head. If Demar decides to play between this this off season before he starts hitting people in training camp, Demar, get your affairs in order. Because right, let's think of the worst comes worst. If this happens again, Jake, now what? Right? Yeah. Is his family taken care of? What does that look like? So if Demar, if you decide to sign that contract and move forward. Get your affairs in order. It's it's tough to say. It, it even it was tough saying that, Jake. But you yeah. just mentioned a lot, a lot of times. You know the players like Demar. If he's not feeling it, he, he will, he'll say something. He'll be honest. That's not the case, Jake. You know, as as a, as an athlete, a lot of times if we're hurt, we're not going to say we're hurt. You we're we're still going to keep pushing through. We're still going to fight through it. And so I don't. I, if Demar is struggling, I feel like he's going to probably mask it and say, "Hey, I need to be out here. I need to be on the t- the football field. I need to make sure I I fight for my team." So. If that's the case, I guess like I said I can hear my mom in my, in my ear. Get a second opinion or get a third opinion and get your affairs in order. And, and I think it is what it is at that point. Well, and, and here's the thing, Cam. People want to hear your take because I'm just I'm just a guy, right? I'm an analyst. Like I didn't play the sport. You did. You know, you played at the NFL level. And so I think it's important to hear your side and and I I vibe with it. I like I may I, you know, we may disagree on this. Because I think he's going to pull this off, whether I agree yeah. with him playing or not. But I vibe with you and what you're saying, because it's hard for you to say it. But I can tell you're passionate <laughs> about this topic. We talked about this for three weeks straight. You know, yeah. this is this is a serious topic. Player safety matters. And this I mean, there's a lot riding on this. Like I wouldn't I, I'm a little surprised. I mean, I don't know how much the NFL would be able to do, but there's so much at stake here. Like you said, if anything goes wrong, the NFL could be really liable and, and whatnot. So I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I, I wouldn't want to be a part of any of this. I just, I'm rooting for the guy and I'm hoping it all works out. And I believe it's going to, I'm not betting against him, but uh final piece here. Um, and then we'll, we'll wrap up the show uh, with our feature NFL player segment, but final piece here on the vibe or don't vibe with segment. It could be pretty quick because we talked about this yesterday uh trey lance okay the 49ers are fielding calls for trey lance right now that does not mean they're shopping him but they're fielding calls cam the 49ers who are fielding calls for trey lance will trade him before or during the draft vibe or don't vibe i don't vibe reason why i say i don't vibe with this is because i did see something that's what brock purdy said hey i i think he said it yesterday I might not be good to go for the season. That could be smoke screen. Jake, we talking about smoke screen, but at the end of the day, if Brock Purdy is not ready, that means you only have two quarterbacks ready to go and really run because Trey Lance, he, we, we haven't really seen. So you have two quarterbacks ready to go. And so the only other option right now is to, like you said, trade him at draft. So then now you have, you have a quarterback locked in. Brock Purdy is still questionable. And then another quarterback can come on, but, I don't know, Jake. I don't know. I don't vibe with it. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, you know, if the 49ers want to win now, we clown the 49ers all the time on the <laughs> Believe in Rams podcast. If the 49ers want to win, they're going to have to have a quarterback in there that can run that offense. And we did say on the last podcast or the last episode that they can win with anybody back there, but they're going to have to get a little bit more firm if they're going to want to go and win a championship. It's I'm not vibing. 
I'm not either. Uh, I don't think trading Trey Lance makes any sort of sense because I would rather start him, try to get that, um, you know, that draft capital up. And, you know, if I was going to trade him, I try to get his asking price back up because right now it's at an all time low. This is the buy low moment. This is before the GameStop spike, you know, in the the stock market, you know, and, and, and to me, you know, you don't, you, you don't trade a guy like that and you definitely don't just do it just because you need more picks. You made the decision to trade for Christian McCaffrey. You knew what you were getting into. This better not be to add a little first here or a second round here and kind of pepper it. No, no, no. You know what you're getting into with this draft class. This would be a mistake. So I'm going to say I don't vibe with this. They're just fielding calls. This isn't shopping around. They're completely different terms. Um, so I don't I don't vibe with that. And then uh, Cam, <clears throat> Happy birthday to Hall of Fame safety Troy Polamalu. Uh, I loved watching this guy, uh, you know, as a kid. And, um, you know, he's a two time, two time <laughs> super. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, a two time Super Bowl winner, 2020 Pro Football Hall of Famer, four time first team All Pro, eight time Pro Bowler, Hall of Fame, uh, all 2000s team. Dude, he played 12 seasons with the Steelers. He was drafted 16th overall in the 2003 NFL draft. Uh, He started 142 games, 32 interceptions, three touchdowns, 107 pass breakups, 14 forced fumbles, 12 sacks, and 783 tackles. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever called him the Tasmanian devil except for Gus Johnson in that one Madden game. But if they had, he was basically a Tasmanian devil because that guy... I would call him a honey badger because I I mean, he was, he was unbelievable and watching him, he'd be able to blitz the quarterback. He'd be able to be a ball Hawk. It was him. It was Ed Reed. I don't know who the greatest safety of all time is, but if, if Troy Polamalu isn't in the conversation, then I want to have that conversation. (laughs) Troy Polamalu. He's a big reason why I want to start playing football. Of course, you know, growing up in LA USC, seeing him wear that helmet and then him going to the Steelers. I mean, I hear when I played in the NFL, I heard stories about Troy that were unbelievable. I know when it comes to lifting weights, like he did it the natural way, calisthenics and doing different methods of training and, you know, he would act like he was blitzing the quarterback, go to the line of scrimmage and run to the middle of the field and pick the ball off like with his finger to, you know, just insane stories. And it's also great to see other other athletes that are emulating his his game, like Hufunga from the 49ers. Right. People say, oh, that's a young Troy Palomalu. So it's great to see other players following his lead and the legacy that he left. So, like you said, happy birthday, Troy. Happy birthday to Troy. Indeed. Uh, this has been episode three in the books now for off the edge, uh, special thanks to our sponsor bet online. And, uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow for our fourth episode where we'll be talking about sleepers in the NFL draft. You guys take sleepers. care and we will see you guys soon. Later folks.